Okay, dear students, now let us take the new chapter 9, Force and Laws of Motion. In previous study, we studied the motion of a body along a straight line path with use of distance, displacement, speed, velocity, acceleration, etc. In that, we did not bother about the reason of the motion. Such a study of motion which does not include reason of motion is known as kinematics. So in that type of the study, we are not bothered about the reason of the motion, how the object is moving, how the object's velocity is changed, that we are not taking any reason. So this type of the study is known as the kinematics. In this present chapter, we are going to discuss motion along with the reasons responsible for it and properties of the body in motion. Such a study of motion which includes reasons responsible for motion also is known as dynamics. So we will also study things which are basic to mechanics like concept of balance and unbalanced forces, Galileo about motions and laws of inertia, Newton's laws of motions and laws of conservation of momentum etc with the example. Surrounding us, we experience. So in our everyday life, we observe that some efforts is required to put a stationary object into motion or to stop a moving object. We ordinary experience it's some muscular efforts and we say that we must push or heat or pull on an object to change its state of motion. The concept of force is based on this push, heat or pull. So what is a force? No one has seen, tested or felt a force, but we always see or feel the effect of force. Pushing, heating and pulling of objects are all ways of bringing objects in motion. Now in this picture you can see in the picture A the trolley moves along the direction we push it. Picture B the drawer is pulled. Picture C the hockey sticks hits the ball forward. So this figure 9.1 indicators pushing, pulling or hitting objects change their state of motion. In the second figure 9.2, a spring expands on application of the force. So when you are taking the simple spring, the spring you can also take from the ball pen. So when you pull the spring, then it extend. As well as when you push the spring, then its size is decrease. Figure 9.2b indicate when we are taking a spherical rubber ball that become oblong as we apply force on it. So when we push the ball from opposite side, then the ball is shrunk. Its shape is also change. So pushing, heating and pulling of objects are all ways of bringing objects in motion. They move because we make a force act on them. Now let us understand balanced and unbalanced force. See here the figure is given 9.3 in which on the table one box is kept and two string are given and it is attached at the two point and one spring is taken as the x spring other spring is not uh, taken as the y string. So the figure shows the wooden block on a horizontal table. Two strings x and y are tied to the two opposite faces of the block. So when we extend one string suppose x string. So if we pull the string x 
then the block begins to move in the right direction. Same way, if we pull the string y, the block moves to the left direction. But if we extend both the string in opposite direction, x in the right direction, y in the left direction with the equal force, then the block will not move. That means here the resultant force act on the block is become zero and in that case these forces are known as the balanced force. But if you applied the force in the left direction and the right direction, among them if any one force is greater than other force, in that case we get the resultant force in the direction of the greater force. So that type of the force is known as the unbalanced force. So you can see in the middle column if the block is pulled from both sides with equal force the block will not move that such a force are called balanced force. Third column if two forces are opposite but with different magnitude means value then net force is not zero it is called unbalanced force. So let us take the balance force if the block is pulled from both side with equal forces the block will not move such a forces are called balance forces and they do not change the state of rest or of motion of an object. That means if the balance force is act on the object, in that case if the object is stationary then the object is remain stationary. If the object is moving with constant velocity then the object continue its motion. That is the meaning of this balance force. If we take the unbalanced force, consider a situation in which two opposite forces of different magnitudes pull the block. Here the block would begin to move in the direction of the greater force. Thus the two forces are not balanced and the unbalanced force act in the direction the block moves. An unbalanced force acting on an object brings it in motion. So whenever we are taking any object and we are applying the force from different direction, among these forces if you are taking one force which is greater than other forces then resultant force is in the resultant force direction that is in the greater force direction. So this force is resultant force is not zero which is known as the unbalanced force. So ultimately an unbalanced force acting on an object bring it in motion. Now let us take another illustration to understand it. The other illustration in which here the figure is given two persons push the object here is the box in forward direction. There are three figures are given. So what happen when some person try to push a box on a rough floor? If they push the box with a small force, the box does not move because of friction acting in a direction opposite to the push. First figure indicate this. This friction force means opposite force arises between two surface in contact. Here the surface is one is the surface of the box and other is the floor surface. So it balance this frictional force balance the pushing force and therefore the box does not move. You can see that the pushing is in forward direction and the frictional force means opposing force is in the opposite direction that is in the left direction 
in the figure A. So figure A indicate less effort act. So no movement. Second figure if pushing force and frictional force are equal in magnitude then also the frictional force still balance the pushing force. So this is balance force and object means the box here is at rest. So you can see in the second figure B the balance force act here and the net force is zero because here the pushing force and the frictional force they are having the equal magnitude and are in opposite direction. So the resultant force is zero hence there is no movement of the box. Now third figure if the person pushes the box harder still the pushing force becomes bigger than the frictional force. Third figure here there is an unbalanced force so the box starts moving. So you can see in the third figure that person try to push the box with very greater force in the forward direction. In that case the frictional force is less compared to the pushing force. So the resultant force here is in the forward direction that is in the direction of the greater force. So here resultant force is not zero and we get the unbalanced force here. So unbalanced force due to that the box starts moving. So what is the conclusion here? When we ride a bicycle, when we stop pedaling, the bicycle begins to slow down. This is our common experience. So this is again because of the friction force acting opposite to the direction of motion. In order to keep the bicycle moving, we have to start pedaling again. That means we have to increase pushing force more than frictional force so that unbalanced force create in direction of moving cycle. Second point, if an unbalanced force is applied on the object, there will be a change either in its speed or in the direction of its motion. Thus, to accelerate the motion of an object, an unbalanced force is required. Remember this point. To accelerate the motion of an object, an unbalanced force is required. So in our day to day life, whatever we are taking the motion of the objects, they are actually accelerated motion. So in that case, the unbalanced force is act on that object and the change in its speed or in the direction of the motion would continue as long as this unbalanced force is applied. So when unbalanced force is applied, then the speed is change or the direction of the motion change and the object is going to accelerate. So however, if this force is removed completely, the object would continue to move with the velocity it has acquired till then. So I hope you understand the balance force and the unbalanced force. In next session, we will study about the Newton's law of motion. Thank you.